So give me, give us a little, like a, a little bit more info on that. Like, so what exactly from alarms did you kind of take, bring to solar or use to kind of craft your pitch that you saw other people weren't doing? Yeah. Um, so with my, I do a lot of question-based selling. I'm a question-based salesman. And so what I do is, is when I go through a sales process with solar, I get them to blame take the blame off of the company they're with and blame it on the grid. So my sales process is all about building pain in the grid and letting them know there's nothing they can do about it. They have no way to fix the grid. The government's not going to do it. The only way they can do it is just put freaking band-aids on this grid to try to get electricity to people. So the only way to get around that is to get solar. So I build so much pain in the grid by question-based selling that at the end, the, the only solution they have is to go sold. So I get them to, to sell themselves on why. Just like when I was doing takeovers for alarms, a lot of times they have phone lines or old antiquated cellular service monitored systems. And I just tell them, hey, look, what happens when 5G comes out? What happens when 4G comes out? Hey, what happens if someone cuts the phone line? They get them to agree that no matter what, they're going to have to get it upgraded. And so I get my clients to agree no matter what, they're going to have to get solar because I'm a firm believer. Everybody is going to have to get it eventually one day because the grid is 130 years old. And we're buying with this electric car boom that's happening. These gas prices going up, it's going to crash the grid. And it's going to be a point where the government's going to say, sorry, you got to put on your roof no matter what, because if the grid goes down, people die and it makes, makes the United States very accessible to hackers and all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of crazy things that, people don't know about the grid and if we keep putting pressure on it then it's like bro we're all in a lot of trouble so that's why i feel solar is such an awesome sale because i can literally tie them down to if they don't want solar what you're going to cancel your electricity bill <laughs> oh sorry you're going to have to keep this no matter what okay is it fair to say that you're never going to get rid of your utility bill yes well if there was a cheaper option if your utility company came to you and gave you a cheaper option would you at least look at it yeah sure okay so the only difference is I'm not your utility company. Before you couldn't have another option because it was too expensive. Now with these new programs, you redirect the payment, you're paying your utility company to the payment on these panels for a cheaper fixed price or for a, a fixed rate that never goes up on you, or a little bit higher rate that's locked in for life. And so all of these things, it's like, if you can bring up enough points and get your customer to agree with it, they're going to go forward with your offer. And that's, that's been my way of selling is really, really diving in and dialing in on, on that emphasis that if you tell them, they're not going to listen. If your neighbor tells them, they'll be open to it. But if you get the customer to tell you why they should do it, oh, yeah, you'll get selling all the, the, the customers sell themselves. It's easy. Security, there's some people you can just harp to them in their ear, but they don't think they need it. Oh, I got my dogs, my guns. I live in a nice neighborhood. Some people, you can't switch them. They can't switch to paying that. But solar, they have a payment that they have to pay no matter what. And you have an alternative that's better for them, better for the community, and better for the world. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah, with security, it's almost like there's a lot of people that are just truly indifferent about it. Yeah. Like, that's like, you know, it's the world we live in. The alarm system's not going to, if someone wants to come in and steal them, like, it's not going to make a difference. They're still going to get yeah. away, blah, blah, blah. But, like, with solar, I like that you i mean i think that's anything that a good coach or trainer it makes it for especially the people that are beginners that aren't used to overcoming objections they're not really sure what they're going to encounter but kind of keeping them focused on the main thing which is getting them focused on the grid yep. um rather than uh their monthly bill or rather than solar itself just kind of helping them to get to that point is super um, important. I, I think also the, it reminds me of when I'm following or when I'm helping people with their follow-up, like checking in with past customers or leads that they have in their text database. Yep. And like, I always like one of the things I harp on people about is like, if they say, or like, we always have to ask them, like, have you gone, have you made the switch yet? Have you gone solar yet? But what we're doing yep. is we're making or if we're getting the customer to kind of keep in their mind that they're going to make this switch eventually like once we get them to tell us that and once they've kind of accepted that we know that it's going to happen and they know it's going to happen and then it's just a matter of why is it not going to happen now and yeah. that is once you get over that it's pretty much a, a slam dunk hopefully yeah. um and that's I, that's one thing we talk about is like the urgency 
-hmm. And the way you build urgency is obviously takeaways and techniques, but really the more pain that you can build with a customer, the more change they're going to want to make. So if you're trying to get your customer to do it today, you have to really dive in on building pain. And you really, because people buy for two reasons, because they love something or because it solves a problem. When I say build pain, that, that what I refer to, what I mean by that is, is causing a problem so that they change. So for me, my job is to build such a problem that they can't do anything about that they want to change. And so most people bash on the utility companies and try to say, oh, this utility companies are screwing you. They're really not. It's They're using the grid that's an antiquated system that they're kind of tied behind their backs. Even the utility companies want you to get sold. Like, because it's too much pressure on them. And so that's why I'm like. Well, and, you... and also from a teaching and coaching perspective, if you uh, get people to uh, have that mindset, then it doesn't matter if they're docking in Arizona or Florida or who, the, what neighborhood they're in with the utility company. I mean, it's all kind of the same problem. Yeah, yeah. the numbers are different. The it's local incentives might be slightly different, but at the same time, your conversation should be the same. And that's because yep. you're focused on the, the root of the problem, which is, is the grid. What's up, everybody? This is Kyle again. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Solar Growth Show. Um, my hair, this is why I wear hats like every day because uh, I like my hair long and it's always a mess. But I, uh, I appreciate you guys watching this. While you're here, please like, comment, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, whatever you can do to uh, support the channel and get future videos so that you uh, can grow your solar business and your solar company and we can continue to make this industry and this world a better place. So until next time, thank you and take care.